All right, welcome back for the Connor Amper Show. You're on 1620 The Zone and on 1620thezone.com. We are efforting Mike Schaefer of Husker 247. Is this correct, Josh? That's right. That's right. All right. Well, we'll get him. I told him we'd call about it. It's, it, it is 1120, right? That's right. You got it. You know. Oh, it. Okay. <laughs> Try and call him back and see what happens. Because on my, on my phone, it says, or on my watch, it says 920. And it's very confusing to me. But yeah, I told him we were going to call a couple minutes early today. Schaefer will join in a minute. Uh, Travis writes in on YouTube. He says, God, I hope Schaefer absolutely dunks on Connor in this segment, which would ironically give Schaefer more field goals than Kalkbrenner made on Friday. I will say that it was pretty funny. All of the, all of the, hey, this has more field goals than Kalkbrenner, including but not limited to john hole on saturday john hole by the way <laughs> he's on a heater right now the snaps by the way still not better but john hole just continues to make the field goals for nebraska which is uh which is pretty awesome to see i've enjoyed it's it's as travis says it's been a great bit it has been a pretty good good bit that's the stuff that i've kind of enjoyed over the weekend uh some of the some of the other things that have been a little, I don't know, that, that have been hurled in various people's direction, uh, less fun. Less fun, obviously. All right, so we'll see if we can uh, get a hold of Mike Schaefer coming up here in uh, in just a couple minutes. And uh, we have many things to get to with him, including how was his weekend? I know Mike was at the, Mike was at the basketball game on Friday in Omaha wearing a hat that said sports on it. Um, so he was just here for, for all of the sports. What's our update, Josh? Sorry. Just not answering? No, nope, going to voicemail. All right. Uh, let me send a text. Yeah. We are calling. Um, or we have called. So that's fine. Uh, we'll see if we can uh, move on to some other things. Uh, Dave... Uh, writes in on YouTube. Hi, Dave. Uh, points scored this weekend. Uh, 18, Dante Dowdell. Uh, wait, 18, Dante Dowdell. 14, John Holt. John Holt, 6. Heinrich Harburg, 6. Jamal Banks, 4. Ryan Call. That's worded in a very interesting way, but um, I, I think these, these are accurate. Yes. Also, people... Uh, the other thing that we'll have probably a minute to get to a little bit later on in the show is uh, the video. Everyone wants to talk about the video of Michael's video. No, not Michael's video. Not oh. this time. Uh, the video uh, of Donnie and Luke Fickle. Donnie. And what what's happening there? Uh, so we'll have we'll have time to talk about that. I see something lit up in the back. That means we have Mike Schaefer of Husker Two Four Seven joins us now on the 42 Degrees of Source Hotline. Schaefer, our apologies for our wacko phone systems. Good morning. How are you? Uh, you're you're good. I had my phone sitting to the side, knew that a call was going to be coming, and just forgot what time it was. So but, oh. uh, that's on me. I'll take oh, you were actually I'll getting the call? You well, were actually I getting I mean, the call. I'm, a, I'm not an old person, so my phone's on silent at all times. I just know when uh, I'm generally expecting phone calls. Uh, and uh, I didn't have I didn't have the, the AirPods ready to go, so it, it's just me. It's just a failure on my end of it. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't think much more of it than that. Okay, that's okay. I, I didn't take it as a personal uh, personal attack. Um, how was your How was your weekend? People are wondering how Mike Schaefer's weekend was. It was. Uh, I mean, look, it was pretty solid. I went to a basketball game on Friday with no expectations and. Walked out enjoying it. Uh, saw you on the big screen several times. Enjoyed the uh, the fact that you sort of got dragged in uh, Twitter mentions from people just because your name is Connor. Uh, I like that. I, that no, I wasn't a, just a that, Schaefer, by Friday. the way. Yeah. Well, you, you had a prediction, I'm sure, that didn't go away. But uh, right. what are you, you going to do? You know, your, your job is to make predictions, and sometimes you're going to be wrong. You know, so that that happened, but that was enjoyable. Uh, the game was the game was pretty surprising. Nebraska looked as good as they have obviously all season. Um, 
And so I, I wasn't so much prepared for that. And then obviously football rolls around. That I was less surprised about. That I thought was fairly possible. I didn't think Wisconsin was good. I thought Nebraska was a better football team than they had been playing. And on one night in Saturday in November, everything came to fruition. Um, how do we describe, how do we explain what Dana Holgerson has done with Nebraska's offense over the last two weeks since he's been here? I think a lot of it is just it's sort of simple efficiency, and he's just taking advantage of things that uh, he's always kind of taken advantage of. I mean, one of the one of the most notable things on Saturday was that Nebraska would stack receivers out to the left and then run behind a pulling interior offensive line or lineman to the right. I mean, it wasn't this isn't reinventing the wheel. This is what Dana Holgerson did when he was at Oklahoma State. He did when he was at. Uh, West Virginia with his run game. I mean, they they would spread people out, and then he would see where numbers are going to be. And if he felt like there was an advantage, he would run to where the advantage is. And so uh, that's just kind of what he's done at other places. And I also think it helps that Nebraska's running a little bit more from under center instead of always being in the shotgun. Uh, I thought that was a bit of a hindrance for them earlier in the year. I thought they looked better in that regard. He was able to get Dylan Riola into the flow of the game early, and I think that allowed him to play a little bit better. I thought some of the best passers from Dylan came later in the night, and, you know, the best one was the the one to Nair that probably should have been a touchdown. So, um, you know, that ball needs to be caught in most situations. And it just kind of shows you, like, the arm talent that Dylan absolutely possesses that we just hadn't seen as much of uh, here in the last month or so. So, I... I don't think he reinvented the wheel. I don't think he did anything, you know, that you would consider to be spectacular. What he did was he basically put Nebraska in situations to be successful. And I think confidence just kind of grew with that team. And they caught, they caught a Wisconsin team that's not that good. I mean, that's the yeah. other thing of it. Like, this happens in college football. It seems weird when Nebraska is the one getting to enjoy it, but it does happen. How, how do we explain, like, the – because I agree with you. It, it, it's it's really pretty simple stuff, and obviously he's a very, very good play caller. He has that on his on his resume, so all that stuff counts toward it. But, you know, I think when people watch it and you don't necessarily know the concepts that they're trying to do or the players that they're trying to get involved, you'll notice something about them that exists now that didn't exist maybe two weeks ago, and it's that the offense has a – a pep in its step, um, a little bit of swagger to it now. Obviously, that starts with the confidence from the quarterback. But, I mean, are, are you surprised that it hasn't taken much tweaks just to get Nebraska to the point on offense where it seems confident again? No, because this team existed in September. I mean, the dumbest part of this whole season is that it just disappeared on a really windy day against Rutgers, never to be seen again until Nebraska played Wisconsin nearly six weeks later. Like, it's just uh, it's baffling to me that Nebraska was struggling as much as it did on offense with how good it looked against Illinois. Like, the, the version of Nebraska that should have probably beat Illinois in September on a Friday, the version of Nebraska that played Wisconsin this past Saturday, they're not that different. I mean, actually, in some ways, Nebraska's defense is worse now than it was uh, in that game in September, but the offense put up 44 points. They could have done that against Illinois. They didn't take advantage of opportunities. You didn't have John Hole making field goals at that time. You just you weren't quite the same team, but we saw in that that they could throw the ball downfield. I mean, those are the two best passing games Dylan Riola has had here at Nebraska, and it it's not like it hasn't been there. It just disappeared, and Marcus Satterfield could not figure out how to bring it back or even a version of it. And so I I felt like coming into the year, this was a better Nebraska team than a 500 or barely above 500 team. They look like they're going to finish 500 or barely above 500. I think it's a reflection of underachieving in the middle of the schedule. And I, I really don't want to pretend like Dana Holgerson just invented a new football team here. He was able to coax performances that have been there all along. I mean, yeah. If anything, people should be a little disappointed that this is the season you're getting instead of the one that could have been. Yeah, I think there's always that angle to it too, Schaefer. You look back and you're like, oh, 
this was out there for us the entire way, and we just did. Yeah, and, and I don't want to. I don't want to minimize the fact that they got the six wins. I also just don't want to like. I think we need to be able to have the discussion that Nebraska both underachieved and met its stated goal. Like I think there has to be the nuance that both exist when discussing the 2024 season. Do you think a lot of how the off season will be approached in terms of what changes? will be dictated on what happens in the next two football games for them? Or I guess, how how do you think about what might happen in December differently now than you might have before Saturday night? I don't know that I think that there's going to be a lot that will change just because of the results of Iowa or a bowl game. I think Matt Rule has a general idea of where he wants to go. I think that Dana Holgerson is a big part of that. I would be somewhat shocked if he's not the offensive coordinator for 2025. I would be surprised if there's not future staff changes. Uh, what that exactly looks like, I don't know. But I would imagine Matt will have a pretty strong idea, even right now. The, the more difficult thing is what does the roster look like on December 9th when the transfer portal opens? How many guys are you expecting are leaving? You know, and maybe there's not necessarily a surprise that some are leaving. But there's probably some people that you're not expecting are receiving the tampering phone calls and want to see what their value is on the open market or whatever it is. So I think the the more unknown has less to do with the coaching staff for Matt Rule than it does what the player procurement and retention looks like for his roster right now. Yep. Uh Schaefer, how about uh how about Emmett Johnson? I you've been in the Emmett Johnson hive, I think, for for a long time. And people always say, hey look, you need to you need to get that guy more carries. Maybe it's not more carries, but it's definitely more snaps. And he's hit a new gear over the last couple of weeks. Um, <laughs> I mean, are, are you at the point where you're, you're looking at Emma Johnson as as closer to the type of guy that Nebraska has been waiting for at that position, or how do you view him differently now? I, I, I mean, <laughs> I don't want to misrepresent myself here. Uh, I haven't been the one pounding the table for more Emmett Johnson. I thought okay. Saturday's okay. performance. Okay, my, my apologies then. I didn't. Uh, I put you in the wrong. No, no, no. I just. I don't want to. I could have, you know, just went with it. But I, I don't want to misrepresent myself here because if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I think Emmett Johnson's a solid running back. I'm not. I am not so enamored by him where I'm like, okay, Nebraska has its running back issue picked. Emmett Johnson's the guy. Everything's going to be fine. I think he took advantage of things on Saturday. I think he's a solid running back. I think, you know, having the play calling and the rhythm and the passing game is going to be able to open things up in the running game. He ran hard. He hit the holes hard. He made people miss. He broke tackles. I liked everything that he did. I think he lacks the gear that makes him a home run hitter, uh, which I think caps his upside. I don't have a very different feeling than him than I did, like, from 2021 Ramir Johnson. Which is to say, yeah. I think there's a spot for somebody like that on the football team, but I, I am very hesitant in the idea that they are going to just be like this incredible football player. I, I think they can be very helpful, or I think Emmett can be very helpful, but I, I wouldn't just look at the running back room and say, okay, fixed, and then move on to the next thing. Uh, I'm very interested in what a Jamarian Parker or a Connor Brook could bring as a freshman. I'm curious about the, the sort of commentary they've had about uh, Makai Nelson and, and what he can bring. But, yeah, I, I'd like to see what Emmett and Dante Dowdell did. I think the two of them work well off of each other. I think it's a better picture today than it was at the beginning of September, but I still don't think we're talking about Nebraska like we did in 2010 no. or whenever you have Rex Burkhead and Amir Abdullah and Braylon Hurd and Aaron Green. You know, like, we're – solid and and it was a very very good performance uh and i hope it gets built upon but i'm i'm a little skeptical that the running back situation is just completely fixed now i agree with you for the record um but i do think he he has maybe hit a little different gear over over the last couple of weeks or maybe it's just like what you said the offense has given has given him a little bit more room that's probably a little He's bit closer a guy that to what we're he's always about. produced he was a really, yep. really productive high school player. I think he was a Gatorade player of the year, his senior year in Minnesota. I know Ron Brown was a big part of Nebraska recruiting him. 
But it was Nebraska UNLV, and I've always kind of gotten the sense that he lacked the upper athleticism that would have brought other Power 5 schools at that time into it. Um, that doesn't mean he can't be a really effective running back. I just think that it's, he, he's going to maximize absolutely what he is. I just, I'm just i not ready to say that that's you know, the pinnacle of what Nebraska running back play needs to be. Hey, quickly before we get you out of here, um, what kind of challenge is Nebraska's defense in for on Friday, um, especially with the issues that they've had? Maybe not so much against the run, but I let a couple big plays go on Saturday. You know Iowa is going to run at you because, well, they don't really have a whole lot of options to throw it at the moment. Can Nebraska's linebackers and safeties hold up against a challenging Iowa scheme? I don't I don't think it particularly well. I mean, they their run fits have been terrible the last few weeks. Yep. Um, particularly from the back end. I mean, it was a really rough game for Nebraska safeties in terms of run fits. Tackling was really kind of poor in that Wisconsin game. I mean, Nebraska's offensive explosion kind of overshadowed. They looked bad on defense in very simple ways. Like it wasn't it wasn't like Wisconsin just did things that made Nebraska look bad. It was Nebraska just didn't make tackles in the hole. Nebraska took bad angles. Nebraska had busts in the secondary or in run fits. So against a team like Iowa that doesn't do a lot different and are more than willing to run the same play over and over, can Nebraska be diligent? Can Nebraska be consistent? Can, you know, Isaac Gifford step into the right hole in the run fit and make a tackle or at least hold up for the, the cavalry to get there to finish it off? I mean, that wasn't happening against Wisconsin uh, when they were able to break some big runs. So a much better running back in Caleb Johnson, a much better running offense uh, with, with Iowa. I mean, that's a that's going to be a challenge. And, and Nebraska's defense really is going to have to kind of step up to it. I think Nebraska has a great chance to win on Friday. But the chance lessens if they're not able to be consistent, particularly that second and third level with run fits. All right, Shafe, I think we're going to try that uh, restaurant that you suggested to us t- tonight or maybe at some point in the next two days. So I'm excited for that. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Any specific recommendations on what to get from that place? I uh, Everything that everyone ordered looked good. I had the burger that's not on the menu at the moment there, but the, it was very, very good. I, I think you'll be happy with whatever you get. The chicken sandwich also looked very interesting as well. Okay. So. And I was, um, you you texted uh, me and Josh yesterday and apologized for the Vikings win. I want to say thank you yeah. because they still won the game. And yes, it was ugly, but it was uh, enthralling to watch at a Las Vegas stadium style sports book. Incredible, incredible <laughs> game. Well, yeah, anytime a team blows an 11-point lead with 22 seconds to go, I mean, I'm sure that's <laughs> going to get people um, pretty fired up in a uh, yeah. gambling type setting. But, yeah, I'm I'm thankful for the win. I would have preferred if they, you know, just took care of business against the high school offense of the Chicago Bears. But what are you going to do? Nice. Schaefer, have a good week. Happy Thanksgiving. Talk to you soon. Bye, right, guys. Take care. Have a good time in Vegas. Don't lose too much money. No. No, I wouldn't dare. That's Mike Schaefer of Husker. Two- Four seven, uh, Cyber Steve writes in. I was quarter- I was quarterback situation is not as good as Wisconsin's, right? Uh, well, neither are good, uh, but I was definitely not as good. Iowa has one of, if not the best, running back in the Big Ten, and you know that they're going to block it because they're willing to block it. You know, they're robotic in a way, right? So Nebraska's. Schaefer, I, like, I look at the, I, I know how people look at football and they're like, hey, Nebraska just beat Wisconsin, so why can't they beat Iowa? It's more for me in what they do and how they do it. And Iowa's offense is going to challenge Nebraska's run fits in a, in a pretty extreme way on Friday. So, like, Nebraska has to tackle and they have to be in the right place. And that is something that they have not been very good at. Now, can they score more points than Iowa's offense? I don't know. That, that'll that be up to Caleb Johnson. So we'll see how that one uh, checks out for us on Friday. Plenty of time to discuss the Iowa game.